Hi everybody, Fintan here from Dance and Cloud and this week we are talking about Gmail versus Outlook. We get asked by customers sometimes if it's okay to sync Gmail with Outlook using the Gmail Outlook sync tool. No, no, don't go look it up. I'm gonna tell you why it's not a good idea and why you're better off training and supporting your users to move to the Gmail interface when you go live on Google or when you migrate to Google. So let's get into it. Uh, I'm gonna cover three perspectives. I'm gonna talk about the business perspective and why businesses would, you know, would rather or, or should opt for the Gmail and web interface. I'm gonna talk about end users. And you know, so if you're an end user yourself, why for you it makes sense to use the web interface. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, IT admins and why for them um, it's more advantageous as well. So from the business perspective, um, having everyone access Gmail through the web and not through an email client means that it's more secure. So the security features of Gmail are designed to be used through the web and a lot of those can be disabled or are, are not possible to work through an email client like Outlook or Thunderbird or you know, whatever the case may be. It's more effective and efficient for end users if you again train them and support them and everyone has the same experience relevant of what device or um, system they're on mac or um, pc everybody has the same experience and that's really important for a lot of organizations and then i just want to talk quickly before i, I kick into the end user piece about gmail um, to outlook and the transition for people gmail can do 90 percent of what outlook can do and in some cases it can actually do tasks and you can perform tasks better and faster in uh, than you can in outlook and in other cases it's the same so for end users if you're trained and supported you will be able to effectively uh, do your work um, in gmail as you did in outlook you can also customize Gmail to actually look a little bit more Outlooky, for want of a better word. And for some users that are very, very heavy Outlook users that have been using it for five or 10 or, or 15 years, this can just really help smooth that transition. And we often do this uh, for people that are more familiar with the Outlook interface. Things like enabling preview pane uh, and disabling a couple of features in, in, in Gmail that just make it seem more like um, the Outlook environment that maybe you're familiar with. Uh, and we have an example here of a Gmail environment that's been uh, made or set up in this way. Okay, so next let's talk about the end user perspective. And before I kick into some of the different uh, features, I just wanna talk about the features that you lose out on if you are to access Gmail through the Outlook environment or the Outlook uh, sync tool. Well, the first one is phishing alerts. Um, through the email uh, client, any, any email client, Gmail isn't able to push through the phishing alerts um, that are built into the web interface system. Uh, and I have anecdotally heard some stories of end users who have been caught out by this and end users who in the same company were using the web interface and they were able to see those alerts and be protected uh, from the phishing scam. You have things like Smart Compose. Smart Compose, again, is only available in the Gmail web uh, interface. I am a huge fan of Smart Compose and it definitely helps me to write some of my shorter emails very, very quickly. Out of Office. In order to access your Out of Office, you have to log into the Gmail interface. So even if you're someone who's using um, primarily Outlook, you're going to have to log into the Gmail interface in order to set your Out of Office. Conversation view. Conversation view is again something that's that's available in the the Gmail interface. Labels. Um, you you will have your labels in Outlook, but you won't have the same capabilities um, as you would have in the web interface. So it's going to be more limited feature set uh, for labels. Uh, the power of Google search. We all go to Google.com in order to search for things, and that same powerful search is built into um, your Gmail environment. In Outlook, Outlook doesn't index things, so you're going to, you know, the, the, the search is going to be much more reduced. Confidential mode, which is sort of a secure send feature, again, only available on the web. Integration with Google Chat, Google Calendar, uh, and many third-party applications as well. So let's dive into, into some of the, the other areas um, where end users tend to run into problems using uh, Gmail and Outlook together. Unlimited mailbox size. So um, for a lot of end users, they will complain that they can't find all of their emails in Outlook. And that's because 
they are again we have the indexing issue but but even if it's run a search that not all of the email is downloaded onto the device particularly users who have very very large mailbox sizes where outlook may limit it uh, to 50 gigs or so google has unlimited storage and so again having that capability on the web interface means that you've access to all of that um, email information in your inbox attachments outlook will force you to attach documents which is really a very old school or traditional way of doing things Google will suggest that you actually uh, attach drive links rather than the full um, item itself and will actually allow you to send much larger files because you, you can upload them to Google Drive. They can be gigabytes or even terabytes in size and you can simply send the link to somebody. With, with um, any email client, you're generally limited to about 25 megabytes um, attachment size, same in, in Gmail. Um, and those integrations with, with Google Drive built into the Gmail interface make it really seamless uh, for end users. I mentioned the search earlier on. Outlook search is painfully, painfully slow. Again, because it doesn't index the, the, the data, Gmail is the fastest way uh, to find information. And advanced search is really, really powerful as well. Uh, a piece of Gmail or a section in Gmail that a lot of users don't actually know is there. Now, labels are interesting. They're a different way of categorizing things than folders. And often there is definitely, I would say, a learning curve here for end users. Um, but it allows users to create automated workflows, uh, to tag emails, basically as they're entering your inbox. Instead of taking actions on them afterwards, that workflow is happening automatically. As the emails hit your inbox, they're getting tagged or labeled and already categorized or organized. And then all you're doing is archiving them once you're done with them, taking them out of your inbox. And that workflow can be a challenge for people. It is a change to how they think about things. But once end users master that, it, 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 it leads to a vast improvement in their productivity. Um, and I have to say, this is almost across the board. When someone gets how labels and Google filters work, it's extremely powerful. And as I said, you can create incredible automations. The Google sidebar. In Gmail, there's a sidebar that allows you to access your calendar, tasks, third-party applications like CRM systems, like Salesforce or Copper, like we use. And this allows you to give you information and context. So I can be looking at something in my email, but also I can see um, maybe information about that same person who's just emailed me inside my CRM system. So that sort of power of bringing everything together is the value of that sidebar. And again, in Outlook, you're losing out on that. Um, there are a huge amount of third party tools that integrate with Gmail so you can add on things like project management, like Asana, like to-do um, lists. We've got to Todoist in our business. And, and again, I can pull up to-do lists based on what I'm looking at or the same with my, my CRM. The CRM is very powerful where, again, as I said, you're looking at a particular email and it's pulling in information um, from that third party. Uh, you can also build your own applications because Google has open APIs. So if you've got your own business application, you could actually build an integration right into Gmail for your end users. So extremely powerful there. And again, not something available um, in the uh, Outlook interface. With Outlook, you also lose Gmail's home for work where Google are seamlessly bringing together all of the different tools like Google Calendar, like Gmail, like Chat, Spaces. All of these things are being brought together into a single interface now to make people more effectively and more easily able to work. In chat now, I can be chatting with someone, they can send me a link to a document and I can open that document within the same actual window without having to go to a, um, a separate tab, all within the Gmail environment. And again, with Outlook, you're removing all of these benefits. And then the next one is spam. And I mentioned this at the beginning, the phishing warnings. Uh, obviously, you've got the kind of spam filtering happening. But the, um, the, 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 the phishing warnings are, are brilliant in Gmail and they're very, very powerful. And, and as I said, I have heard of organizations where, you know, senior people in the business wanted to use Outlook and they were the ones that got cut out by the phishing uh, attacks and the uh, other users who were using the Gmail interface didn't. 
Troubleshooting, there are, are a bunch of known um, issues with the Outlook Sync tool um, that can cause challenges for end users, you know, particularly when kind of something goes wrong. There's a list of the known issues and we'll, we'll link to that. And these can lead to frustrations for end users and IT having to recover mailboxes and things like that and, and try to get users back up and running or sort of re recover the, the Outlook uh, uh, file. And you know, that is just a huge headache for end users. And the idea of technology for me is, or the best technology gets out of the way. And that's what Gmail is doing. You're just, I just log in in the morning and I have access to my Gmail and I don't have to think about it working or not working. And if something happens at my laptop, I can just move to a different device and I can log in and I have access to my email once again. So this idea of being tied to it, to an email client or, or a particular piece of software on my computer to me just doesn't make any sense uh, in this modern sort of era. And then from the IT admins perspective, they really don't want to be supporting um, an email client. So, you know, by by having end users use the web interface for IT admins, particularly in large organizations, it's zero IT maintenance for you guys. So that is really the direction that most of our customers IT admins want to push end users because they don't want another piece of software that they have to support that they have to maintain that they have to update or worry about security of um and and so it just it, it, it for, for them it just makes their life much much easier reduces they have found the um amount of calls to IT support desks um and a lot of our IT admins will say that it changes how people look at the IT team when they move to Google, that they become, rather than the break fix guys, they become the team that actually can help you become more efficient, more effective, and, and, and people are coming to them and saying, how can I use Google Forms and Sheets to maybe change some of my workflows rather than, hey, this is broken, can you fix it? Uh, and I think that's an interesting kind of perspective change. So hopefully you guys found some of those um, features and, and, and uh, areas that we discussed valuable. I certainly feel that um, uh, Gmail, the Gmail interface makes much more sense to use um, uh, Google through. I think personally and you know really playing devil's advocate, if you are a business with 10 people or 10,000 people and you want all of your users to use Outlook, really you have to question why are you using Google Workspace in the first place? And I know that maybe sounds like a crazy thing for <laughs> us to say, but I think it is a question that, that, that end users and the customers, um, pardon me, customers really have to ask um, because if you're moving to Google Workspace and you're embracing the entire tool and technology platform, then you should really be using it in the way it was intended. And that is where you will get all of the updates and the benefits um, of the platform. So that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's update. Um, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel if you are watching us on there or our LinkedIn uh, page, if that's where you're watching, or indeed Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, uh, as we are on those platforms as well. Please do comment below and please let us know maybe what are the biggest differences for you that you find between Outlook and Gmail. Um, and if you are transitioning from Outlook to Gmail or your business is migrating uh, over to Google Workspace, then please get in contact with Dan's Cloud. We are um, one of Google's um, oldest partners in um, the UK and Ireland. That's our, our main area of focus. And we can help you transition uh, with training and change management and migration services. All right, guys, that's it for me. I will chat to you guys. Next.